I have another power bank I want to share with you today. This is the Lake 300 from the company Vigorpool. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unit, keep watching. Before we get started, I want to thank the company Vigorpool for reaching out to me and offering to send one of the units for me to test out. Now, before I accept it, I did, had not heard of this company before, so I did a little bit of research, looked at their website, looked through all the information I could find on them, and with what I saw, I was very impressed. And based on what I saw, I accept it. Now, I happen to accept a smaller battery. I could have chose from a number of them, but the reason I chose the smaller battery is I wanted to get back to units that are very much more portable than some of the other ones that I've been reviewing lately. So now what we're going to do is go down to the tabletop where I'll go over the key features, the physical and performance specifications, the operations for this unit, and then I'll share my experiences with it. All right, just before we take a closer look at the Lake 300, I want to share with you what it came with. So let me put the battery aside for a moment. So really only two things. One is the external charging cable, and this is an AC to DC inverter that you would plug into the wall and plug into the unit itself. Put that aside. And there is a DC charging cable set up for use in your vehicle with the cigarette lighter. Quite a long cable, which is nice, so that you can reach it back to wherever you have the unit stored. Now, there are two other things, of course. One is the manual with all the good information and operation of the unit itself. And the other is the warranty information and registration card. All right, let's put those things aside and we'll go into the key features for the unit. So right off of the top, just to keep it very, very simple. There's only a couple of things that is, is needs to be mentioned. And one of them, which is a good feature to have in a unit like this, is that it has dual port charging, simultaneous charging from two external sources at the same time. So you can see down here is the 5521 barrel port input for DC input. So that's where you would use either of the two cables that I just shared with you and plug in here. You could also, if you have a, a solar panel with the right cable attachment, plug it in here to charge the unit. But if you want to charge this with another power source, you can do that, but it is through the USB Type-C fast charge port. So if you have one of the fast charge uh, chargers that you can plug into the wall, then you can get a combined input wattage of 190 watts, which will significantly decrease the amount of time it takes to charge this unit. It also has pass-through charging, which is to say that you can plug this into either of those power sources just mentioned, and also plug you devices into this to recharge them at the same time. And it does come with a two year warranty as well. All right, let's move into the physical specifications for this unit. So the overall weight is 9.67 pounds or 4.3 kilograms. And you know, when I picked it up for the first time, it seemed to be light for its size. And then I recalled, of course, is that the charger is external to the unit and that does reduce some weight. So if you're carrying this around and don't have a need to recharge it anytime soon, you are saving weight by having that outside of the primary unit. Now, the dimensions for this unit are 10 0.03 inches or 25.5 centimeters in this dimension. It is 8.26 inches or 21 centimeters top to bottom. And from front to back, it's 7.1 inches or 18.2 centimeters. Now, built in is a 320 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery, and they rate its capacity as being capable of 2,000 cycles before it starts to drop its max capacity to about 80%. And I'm going to be say from experience with a lot of these batteries, lithium iron phosphate being the better technology for batteries in a, a power unit like this can go at least 2000 cycle charges, which is good to know. So you're good for a long, long time before you start to lose any capability. And even then it just reduces down to 80% of its original capacity. So it's going to be a long time before this starts losing any performance. All right, when it comes to the performance specifications for the Lake 300, let's start with the input. So I mentioned a minute ago that this unit will accept dual charging from two sources at the same time. The first being the 5521 barrel port 
for the uh, input, the DC input, and that's rated and can accept up to 20 volts at with at 4.5 amps, which is significant. That's good all by itself. But the, the USB Type C input port or output port, it's a dual input and output port, will accept 100 watts of power if you have a charger capable of doing that for a combined 190 watts input power at the same time. So this will charge very, very rapidly as a result. All right, let's go over the output ports all over this device. So to start with, we have what you expect, which is two AC outputs rating at 110 volts. And I, right now I have it set for 60 hertz, but there is a, a, an ability to change it to 50 hertz if that's what you need. So you have a total of 300 watts that you can deliver through either of these ports. You have two USB type A port external or charging ports here for de uh, devices rated at 18 watts each. And as I mentioned, you have the USB type C fast charge port up here rated at 100 watts. You do also have two more of those 5521 barrel port, port par ports over here if you have devices and the means to plug into them. And of course you have the, the all encompassing 12 volt vehicle charging port for devices that you may have for that purpose. Now it does also come with a little LED lamp on it like many of these units do. I'm not gonna turn it on and blind you, but it has the low, high and strobe like most of them do. Now there is one more port on this which is a wireless charging platform on top which I think is a good feature to have on a battery in this price range. You don't see that often on these smaller batteries in this price range. I don't have anything that can make use of that. My phone won't accept wireless charging, but if you do, then there it is for you to use. All right, let's go over the operation of the Lake 300. Now I have the battery kind of balanced here is to make sure that you can see everything that I'm doing and it's not reflected or there's no light reflecting off of the display. So the overall power is turned on by the central button right here and so that's its primary power button press and hold for about three seconds and the power will come on and you'll see the display light up here now i'm going to talk about the display in a moment one of the things i really like about this unit is how well laid out the front panel is so it is portioned off or sectioned off into its different ports so here we have the um, ac ports two 110 volt AC ports that can be, and they are pure sine wave, if you uh, wanted to know that, of course, pure sine wave output, 110 volts, rated at either 50 or 60 hertz, so it's interchangeable depending on what your needs are. Right now, of course, I have it set for 60 hertz, so you can get a combined output here of 300 watts, and that's not insignificant at all. Up in this corner, of course, is where the DC output is, so you have the 12 volt vehicle type output port and two more 5521 uh, por uh, barrel ports here. Each of these are rated at 12 volts DC, three amp total. And the this the main power port or the car port here is rated at 10 amps uh, output. So you get a combined wattage of 72 watts out through these ports. Now of interest is the USB ports down here. So you get two USB B type A ports rated at 18 watts each and one USB type C input port and output port rated at 100 watts. And what's interesting is that you do not have to have a separate button to turn any of those ports on. Just the primary button is all that's required and then these are available for your use. And of course up here in the corner is the LED lantern. I won't turn it on and blind you but the button for operation is right here. Now let's just talk about the display and I'm hoping that this is showing up on the camera clearly enough. Very simple display, very clear, very easy to read. Not a lot of extra information, but just enough for you to see what's going on. So in the dead center is a 
two means of telling how much power you have left in your battery. Cer certainly right in the center is the numerical digital display telling me I have 77% of my total capacity left for me to use. Around the outside is a segmented blue circle which gives me a graphical representation of how much I have left to use. On this side is the input wattage so it doesn't matter if it's one input source or two input source it's going to tell me how much water wattage is going into this unit at any given time. On the other side is the output wattage and it doesn't break it down between AC or DC it just gives you the total so if you plug something into every one of these ports it's going to show you all of the output through wattage right here. Now What's missing from this that you might find on more advanced units is just how long you have left, if it's output, how many minutes or hours you have left. And you did see it timed out, so it's just quick port, quick touch, and it will bring it back up. And on this side, it doesn't tell you how much time till you're full. So those are nice extras to have, but they're not necessary for you to understand what's going on with your battery. It's something that would be nice to have, as I mentioned, but again, not required at all. All right, just two more comments before I talk about my experiences using the Vigorpool Lake 300. First off, and some people will see this as a bit of a con, and that is that it does not have a UPS function or an un interrupted power supply function. But to be honest, that's not unusual for smaller batteries of this size. It's usually the larger home size batteries, and I've reviewed a few of those that have that function. So basically, you can't expect the any devices that you have that you rely on that must have power 24-7, whether it's a CPAP machine or your computer or whatever, you can't expect to plug those devices into this unit, plug this unit into the wall, and have those devices devices draw current directly from your house AC wall current. Uh, they st it, you can still do this, but what will happen is you'll have a simultaneous charge and discharge, which is much less efficient. So it's not the type of thing that it's, this unit is not set up for doing that with. Now, having said that, this still has a pure sine wave inverter. So if you have pieces of machinery like a CPAP or anything else that you want to protect with pure sine wave, as I mentioned earlier, this has that going for it. And it's got enough battery power that it's going to go run a fairly long period of time as well. Now, the other thing I want to mention about this is that it has an automatic turn off after a period of time. So it is rated that if after 12 hours that there is no load on the machine, meaning that either Either something you were charging up has completed or you just didn't turn the machine off after uh, using it and pl unplugged everything from it, it's going to turn itself off. And that's a power saving feature, of course. Now, I'll tell you why that's important to have on a unit like this. So this has the AC inverter and you ha saw that it has two uh, 110 volt output ports going for it. What a lot of people don't realize is, is that when you turn that on, the AC on, and turn the inverter on, it immediately starts, starts drawing power from the battery even if you don't have anything plugged into them. So I noted with this unit that it draws between two and three watts ongoing. So if you are charging something up or operating something using the AC current and you're finished, it's important that you turn the AC power off from this unit. Otherwise, it's going to continue to drain the battery. Now, it's not a lot of power and it will last you a fair amount of time, but it's just an unnecessary waste of power. And you might come back to this and see that you say, significantly drained your battery because you failed to turn the AC off. And that's where the automatic shot off comes in. It keeps from net, uh, uh, extended draining of the battery. Okay, so those are the other two things I want to mention. Now let's just talk about my experiences with it. So when I asked for this battery or requested this one specifically, again, I was looking for a smaller unit. I've reviewed some big batteries lately. Some of them are really, they're more for home preparedness. And there's nothing wrong with that, of course, but they don't do well as transportable batteries for car camping or outdoor events or even taking to a job site where you need some off-site independent power because you don't have access to the grid system and that's where this type of battery comes in. Now you have to understand it does have limitations. It is lighter weight. You are going to be able to go car camping with this. You will be able to run most of your electronic devices that you would normally take car camping but it is limited to a certain power output. 
output portage. So what you need to know ahead of time is what is the power consumption for each of the devices you were thinking about taking. If you're thinking about taking your coffee maker from home, it's not going to work on this device. Your coffee grinder, if you have an electronic one, that will work. But then again, I'm not set up to do either of those things. I have all kinds of power less devices for making both coffee or grinding my coffee. So that's not important to me. But maybe what type of tools you can use with this device is important. So for instance, this will operate my electronic corded electronic drill or my battery operated drills by recharging the batteries, but it won't operate my skill saw. It doesn't have enough power for that. So what you need to do is decide what tools it is that you want to bring. Look at the tag that's on the side or the bottom of most of those tools to see what type of current it requires, and then see if this battery is capable of doing that. If not, you either have to choose another tool or choose another battery. Either way, you want to look at it. But again, when you choose a battery with more power, you also get more size and more weight to go with it. So I've been playing with this around the house. I've used it quite extensively as I do with most of the batteries, well all of the batteries that I test. And what I can say about this is this is truly a high quality item. It's very simple. It operates with very basic information. It has the higher quality components into it. And as I mentioned when I opened up, I was very impressed with the Vigor Pool website and the information, all the information they had available there. So yeah, I think it's a high quality Quality battery, a little smaller than some that I've recommended lately, but still a good one that's well worth looking at at a reasonably good price. I believe right now this unit is selling for $449 US if it's not on sale, which it likely will be by the time you go to take a look at it if you're interested in it. Okay, that's all the information I have about this battery. I will put all of that and more in the video description below if you're interested. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.